Every time you go to change, there are two lies when you go to change. Number one, you can't change. Number two, you don't need to. Either way, the devil has you trapped. Oh no, they need to change. They need to do it different. They need to appreciate me. No, you need to be less needy. Truth. Truth to power. <laughs> and the Lord is calling you to freedom. And the devil has held you long enough in a lie. And a sermon can't set you free. Decisions do. Decisions do. Decisions to do what? To be a disciple. Teach me, Holy Spirit. Only God knows the truth about you. Even your parents can't fully see your potential. They're too busy trying to keep you from getting in a car wreck. I'm serious. There will be things in my kids that I can't see in them that their Heavenly Father can. And it's not my job to limit God. There are things that nobody has seen in you. There are blind, talk about BS. You got blind spots. <laughs> you got blind spots. You can't see it, but God does. But now you squeezed your whole belief into an experience. Well, uh, somebody that God really could use would never do this and that. You know Moses was a murderer, right? You know David had a, one of his main warriors killed in battle, the one that wrote the little psalmy psalmies that we like to sing? Man after God's own heart? You're not trash. You just need new truth. And I kind of see some of the things that you did before, like baby teeth, baby, baby truth. And it's got to fall out for this new thing to grow. And there's no truth fairy coming around to your house to give you $10 for it either, all right? In fact, the devil is so crafty and he's so lazy, he convinces you that you're trash, that you can't trust God, that it's over. And then he's so, he's so good at his job that he delegates it to you, and you start collecting evidence for why he's right. You start collecting evidence. This is not trash from our house. I had somebody put this together for me professionally. I don't want y'all to see in my trash bag. If he's good enough at his job, he will convince you this is who you are, this is all you can be, this is why that happened to you. Some of you, people did things to you, you didn't even do it to you, and now you feel ashamed about it. How in hell do you believe that? Not, I'm not cussing. How has hell, how has the devil gotten so strategically in your mind that you think that, that somebody did something to you and that makes you dirty? The devil is a liar. I'm clean. I'm clean. And, and even if I did it, I'm still clean because I've been through the waters and it's under the blood of Jesus. That's my truth. That's my truth. It doesn't come from me. Don't do the devil's job for him, just finding reasons why you should feel bad. Oh, well, now I'm just in the market for misery. Now he doesn't even have to lie to me. I'm on autopilot. I'm just collecting lies to support the truth that he told me, and he told me it was my truth, and this is how high I can go, this is all I can do, and this is all I'll ever be, and this is why it happened, and God's not with me. And oh God, 2022, it's gonna be 2020 part two. Shut up. <laughs> if the devil's gonna lie, make him make him log his own hours. Don't help him. You know what I'm saying? Don't help him. I dare you to delete the app. I dare you to block the number. I dare you. To, I dare you to drop. Touch three people. Tell them I dare you to drop it. I dare you to drop it. I dare you to let God prune your butt. The devil has held you long enough. The devil is a liar 
and he's on a leash. He can't do it forever. If the sun shall set you free, you gotta drop something to receive something. You gotta drop something to do something. You gotta drop something to be somebody. I'm a child of God, baby. I got the truth. I'm set free. You've helped me. Hey, devil, you hear that? Get under my feet. You've helped me. Long enough. Long enough. Long enough. Long enough. I'm 41. That's long enough. I'm 12. That's long enough. I'm six. I'm 67. That's long enough. Tired of this. I'm tired of trading the truth of God for a personal experience and worshiping at the altar of my background. I'm tired of shrinking my life to the level of what I've seen or heard from others that is possible. I'm going to hold on to this like I'm on, like I'm on a ski. I'm going to hold on to Jesus. I'm going to hold on this year. And I read where Peter tried to hold on and he couldn't ski, so Jesus picked him up. If I can't hold on to him, he'll hold on to me. But it only, it only, it only happens when you decide long enough. Because Jesus is talking to people who believe him, but they're still not free. They're not bad, but they're deceived. You're not bad. You're deceived. You have no room for his word. Could be your schedule. Could be. You got so much lies. Y'all, when I was holding that trash bag, I felt like in your trash bag there might be offenses. There might be memories. You like the you like to lie to yourself after a while. It excuses you. Because if you're trash, you get to act like it. If you are nobody, you don't have to do anything. If you're a child of God, that means, well, now you will want to live like it. I'm still naive enough to believe that there's at least 30 people in this room, or maybe even online, or maybe even at one of our other locations. Lake Norman's having an anniversary today. Maybe it's Lake Norman who are ready to trade the trash for the truth. Who don't want to run around the playground another year looking for Oscar? Yeah. Who don't want to spend another 40 years in the wilderness? It's long enough. The wilderness. What does that have to do with John chapter 8? That's the Old Testament, the wilderness. Not really. It all goes together. Because Jesus is teaching at the festival called the Festival of Tabernacles. That's the context of John 8. Remember when he fed the 5,000 in John 6? 5,000 men and women and children? Pretty cool. John chapter 7 is really different, though, because John chapter 6 is about how God feeds you. John chapter 7 and 8 is about how God frees you. So if I just sit around asking God, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, pay it off, pay it off, pay it off, pay it off, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, make go away, make go away, make go away. That only gets you so far. You can believe that God does those things for you, and He will. But now it's about freedom. I want to be free this year. I want to be more free of what people think about me. I don't. I don't know. I can get there or not. I still think all those things. You know. I hope they like it. Nobody said anything. Is it okay? Is it? I mean, I'm. I'm not saying. I'm, but I've been. I've been a slave to that long enough. I'm sick of it. It's boring. It's old. I know how that movie goes. They don't pay attention because they're thinking about themselves. I'm sick of that. I'm, I'm sick of being a slave 
to my, my feelings. I'm sick of that. I'm sick of being a slave to cynicism. I can tell you 13 ways it's going to go wrong. I'm sick of that. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, took it back because it didn't fit. I'm sick of being cynical. So, What does the wilderness have to do with if the truth will set you free? You will be free indeed. Well, when Jesus went to this festival, the festival of tabernacles or the festival of shelters, it's a week long festival. He comes right in the middle of the festival, and it was a festival after the harvest where they came together to celebrate and commemorate when God brought his people out of Egypt, and then in the wilderness. They decided to believe the report of the spies that said, we can't go in, rather than to believe what God had spoken and take the land by faith. That's the context. You follow me? That's the context of John chapter 7 and John chapter 8. So as Jesus is teaching this truth, it's in the middle of a festival where in order to commemorate this time when God led his people through the wilderness, for 40 years. They stayed in Egypt 400 years. They came out through the wilderness and were only supposed to be there for 11 days. Look at this in Deuteronomy chapter 1. It says, These are the words that Moses, the servant of the Lord, spoke to all Israel in the wilderness. Everybody say wilderness. The wilderness, east of the Jordan. And then there's a bunch of different places that it mentions, but I want you to see this this next verse, verse 2. Put it on verse 2, please. It takes 11 days to go from Horeb, the mountain of God where the covenant was given, to Kadesh Barnea. That's where he sent the spies out to go into the land. How long does it take to go from Horeb, the mountain, to the promised land? 11 days. You could almost skip right over that, and it would be insignificant. And I could have stopped this sermon while we were shouting, but I need to show you this because it is the context of freedom. It is the context of freedom. It takes 11 days to get from where they were to where God was taking them by the Mount Seir Road. But look at verse 3. In the 40th year is when Moses prepared them to go in. How did they turn an 11 day journey through the wilderness into a 40 year wandering where they were stuck because of what? They believed because they would not believe the truth. The truth is, we can do it if God is for us. Our enemies don't stand a chance. The truth is, God is melting down your enemy's defense even as we speak. If God is for you, who can be against you? That's the truth. Ah, but the facts, the facts. Oh, they're bigger than us. They're stronger than us. We can't do it. We're not prepared for this. You are staying in frustration 40 years because of what the facts are saying to you. When faith could get you there in 11 days. After 40 years, Joshua led the people there, but it didn't have to take 40 years, and it doesn't have to take you 40 years, and you don't have to pass it on to your kids, and you don't have to live like this until you die and hope to get to heaven one day and a mansion in glory. If the sun sets you free, you will be free if you hold to the teaching. If you hold to the teaching, stop holding to the trash. The moment you do this, God is going to start doing this. And what what you've wandered in for 40 years, God can bring you out of in 11 days. Let he that has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying today. The devil has held you long enough in your truth. It's time for God's truth. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream, and share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.